back to another video in our channel. In our video today, we are going to do the part two of our series on why Chelsea are struggling this season, why Chelsea are failing to break lower blocks. Our point of focus today will be how Pochettino sets his team up and how his team is failing to be able to break these teams down. And this is going to be our analysis for the video today. We've done a part one of this video. Hit the link at the top right hand corner to see the video that we did. We are going to go in depth in how Chelsea have lined up themselves this season and what we expect Chelsea to look like after the tran after the international break. So stay with us. So in our previous video, we looked at two teams that break lower blocks. And one of the best teams in doing this was Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. I've done a series on how Manchester City won the treble. Link is in the top right hand corner. As well as in the previous video, I've explained how Pep has managed to break lower blocks in the Premier League. Since Manchester City are a possession based team, they have been facing lower blocks throughout the Pep era in Manchester City. So this is the video that you're going to click. It is the part one segment of this video. And in that video, we've looked at Manchester City and Liverpool and how Klopp and Pep Guardiola have broken it down. We analyzed how Klopp used his front three and his fullbacks to break down lower blocks with quick movement playing through these deep defensive blocks that come up against Liverpool. Check that video so that you can connect it with this video. Pochettino has insisted in lining up Chelsea in a 3-4-3 system. Sanchez has been preferred as the number one goalkeeper upon the departure of Kepa. The back three of De Sassi, Thiago Silva and Colwell has been preferred over a back four. Chilwell and Gusto have been the starting wingbacks with Caicedo and Gallagher being the double pivot and only Jackson and Sterling being the attackers in the team with Enzo Fernandez playing that roaming role in between the lines. And we are going to see how this formation limits Chelsea and why Chelsea are failing to score. Like, share and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. So Chelsea like building from the back but because of their PC front three and the ability of them to play these long balls in behind, as we saw in the West Ham game, West Ham decided to sit deep to close this gap. And this is what many mid blocks and lower blocks teams do, forming banks of four in front of their goal line. So Sterling and Chilwell were tasked to give width to the team, with Thiago Silva, De Sassi, and Colwell forming the back three. Now, the issue with these two banks of four is that they like to condense the space in between the lines and you only find Nicholas Jackson as the only person occupying this position. So you will find Enzo roaming around all over the pitch, but Chelsea are not exploiting the center of the pitch. Now, you can see that Pochettino prefers building with the back from this clip. This is a clip of his Tottenham team back in the days. Pochettino likes his centre-backs to form back three, with one holding midfielder dropping deep. This was aided by Eric Dyer dropping in between the two centre-backs. And you saw Pochettino likes to pick players over the top when opposition decide to press high. Pochettino's teams like to have high and wide wing-backs with two holding midfielders. Fullbacks or wingbacks are a crucial component of a Pochettino system since they are the ones who are required to generate width. Unlike Manchester City, who prefer having their wingers wide, Pochettino prefers having his wingbacks wide, with midfielders occupying the central zone. So, another problem that is in the Pochettino system is Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez is an incredible player but his shooting accuracy is quite poor in the final third. 
Therefore, Chelsea need a player who's excellent at shooting and scoring goals. Enzo Fernandez can use his incredible build-up and, bo- and vision in deeper positions to link up play. In some instances, Raheem Sterling tries to run at the fullback, but he's, he doesn't have the support and therefore most of the times he gets cornered by the fullback since there's no other player who's occupying the half spaces. So when he decides to occupy the half spaces, the only thing that Gusto can do is just make these crosses, which teams in lower blocks have excellent center backs in winning these headed balls and immediately launch quick counter attacks against Chelsea. Therefore, Chelsea usually have at least two players during these attacking phases of play, with the wing backs generating width. But the problem is you're not going to get Chilwell taking a fullback 1v1 and most of the time he will lose the ball. Therefore, wing backs are only accurate in making these crosses. And since Chelsea only has one player who is tall enough to win these crosses against two aerially dominant center backs, the option of crosses is not good for Chelsea. And sometimes Chelsea create side overloads, but these side overloads are also are not quite beneficial. Look at this clip the way Chilwell receives the ball. When you have a winger in these kinds of instances, he will be little against the opposition attack. But you see, when you have a fullback in these kinds of position, the only thing you can get is crosses, and fullbacks are not good 1v1 players. And that's why Pep Guardiola prefers having wingers in these advanced positions. Because when you have wingers in these advanced positions, they are more likely to take on fullbacks. Wingbacks are not quite great in this position, since the only threat that they pose is making crosses, and also their finishing is not quite the best. And that's why the reason I'm making this video is to emphasize that wingbacks can only make crosses in the ball, and therefore you need to have aerially dominant forwards in those positions, or forwards who know how to make runs. Another problem with Chelsea is that rather than shifting play quick, they like to recycle the ball slowly, allowing the opposition to go back to their default position. See the route in which the ball takes, rather than just picking the ball and switching it quick. The only player who attempts these switches is Enzo Fernandez, but currently he's playing further forward. So if Enzo would play deeper, it would be better. And Sterling, when he receives the ball, the main thing he will do is that he will attack the byline and attempt to make these crosses, sometimes making crosses with Chilwell, not even pushing to the far post. So these are some of the problems that Chelsea are facing. The wing-back system, fewer attackers in the attacking third, and also the greatest problem which is missing chances. The few chances that Chelsea generate in games, they don't take them and kill off teams. Therefore, in our next video, part 3 of this video, we are going to make a video on why Chelsea should adapt their system to create better overloads such as teams such as Manchester City, Arsenal and Liverpool are doing. If you have enjoyed this video, like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.